Number five. Four. GTA four. Yeah. Mm. Well, I was expecting it to be higher. You know, I, I'm not surprised to see it in another. I mean, it is amazing, isn't it? Has it anyone is not amazing. liked GTA four? Yeah. Although part of me felt like I was voting it just for it had to be in there. It's still a great game, but part of me felt, am I just putting in this it's this in there for the sake of it? It's easy to pick holes in GTA 4, but yeah. it is brilliant. I mean, it's, again, it's, it's the whole thing of the rich world that Rockstar yeah. do so well. It could have it could have been more in some ways, but then most things can. I think yeah. it could have been mm -hmm. kind of funnier, um, and there could have been a little bit more to do, perhaps. But I've spent hundreds of hours in that thing and online yeah. and co-op, and, and there's no other game where I've sort of rolled into basically Times Square in a coach with all my friends in the coach while an attack helicopter shoots rockets at us and then watched everybody trying to get out of the coach because it's caught fire and it's about to explode. <laughs> you know, it's just ridiculous. That's multiplayer in case funny. you're confused. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, not a mission. Yeah, right. multiplayer moments, uh, great. I mean, like just giving you that freedom with 20 other people, you know, was, mm. it, was a thing. But I think the single player, this more serious slant, I think it'd be, it was just a showcase for Here's an existing city we've already visited mm. with new technology, and you know the euphoria physics, the sort of um, mm. just had a really amazing for that. I remember f first putting it in and spending so much time absolutely in awe of just watching people walking past and and knocking the, them over. Mm. Yeah, and the drunk physics and just you know mm. just felt just felt amazing. I mean, the impact's gone now a bit because it's quite old now. Yeah, it's well, old. So I've times in that I've just ended up standing on the beach near the Coney Island, uh, you know, fun fair. Yeah. And it started raining, and there's lightning coming down in the distance. And I'm sort of, oh, you know, I'm getting wet. I'll go and stand under this pier. And if it's not <laughs> raining under the pier, and you can actually just stand there and watch the lightning, and yeah, all like the, and watch the, the waves coming in. And that. All little, little things. I even just wandering around near the coast and listening to the sounds and stuff. It's yeah. They, they spent, you know, rock stars are now based in New York, aren't they? A lot of them. And so, you know, they, it felt like a developer who, who knew New York inside out, making a loving homage to it. Yeah, I, I think <coughs> in the brilliant, one of the brilliant things that GTA series has always had, and it's had of everything they added, is this idea of like con uh, convergent magic moments, like emergent gameplay. Mm. Um, I remember like even playing at a very early stage GTA 4, and this is what sort of, again, reminded me why I love it so much, is like walking through the city, uh, accidentally bristling against a gang member who sort of took umbrage to it and started swinging his fists <laughs> at me. And then I, I like knocked him out. And suddenly all these gang mates come pouring in over the, like, over the park. So I start running away from his gang. <laughs> They're all pursuing me. Uh, the only way I can get away is by nicking the nearest vehicle, which happened to be like a really cruddy low CC scooter. <laughs> and then I've got like, this gang chasing me in, in cars really fast. I'm on this low CC scooter going like, <laughs> like flying up the street. And then I'm, I'm essentially heading down a dead road. Like, it's just a dead end. I'm thinking, well, what can I do? They're going to get me. And I don't know if this is like luck or genius games design. There was like a plank of wood at an angle at the end of the street going over a fence. <laughs> so I'm, I'm whizzing towards this mini <laughs> ramp. Like, I'm <laughs> the lot behind me. And as I'm doing it, that song comes on the radio that... My mind's telling me yes, <laughs> but my body, my body's telling me no, or whichever way around that goes. <laughs> and, and then I, I whiz into the uh, into the ramp and hit the fence and collapsed and got killed. <laughs> but you just think, that, what brilliant! That's brilliant. You know what a game. So wow. GTA Four deserves number five. Number four, we're really in at the sharp end now. Half Life Two, the orange box. Yeah, yeah. It's an, an amazing collection of amazing games. Best you know, value for money in gaming history. It's got to be, isn't it? There's not a dud on there. In case there. you don't know, it's Team Fortress 2, Portal, Half-Life 2, Half-Life 2 Episode 1, Half-Life 2 Episode 2. Yeah. And all amazing. Yeah. Maybe like 80 hours of, of game, 70, 80 hours of game now. A lot of game. Yeah, th lots yeah. of game. It, it got it got derided on its initial PS3 release for the quality of the conversion, which was handled uh, in house at Electronic Arts, not by Valve Quite themselves. Bad, yeah. It wasn't it wasn't brilliant, and I I hadn't paid uh, you know the pr a prior version, so I couldn't make comparisons. I played the PS3 version cold. It's the first time I played Half Life on PS3. I thought it was absolutely fine. I, the story more than made up for it. I thought so. Half Life Two alone is one of the greatest games ever made. Albeit a game that's what eight nine years old now or yeah, something. Yeah, very old. Still, you know, still holds its own. Still yeah. looks good. Still plays good. Decent, exciting <coughs> universe. Brilliant. 
Half-Life 2 Episode 1 is arguably the only misstep on that package. I think it's good. Relative to Half-Life 2, I mean, it's still in its own right. You know, Episode 1 itself is better than a lot of, you know, whole games. It's probably better than Homefront, for example. Yeah. It's longer than Homefront. <laughs> I mean, I, I yeah. know that's not saying much. <laughs> Uh, and Half-Life 2, Episode 2, again, it is almost pitch perfect, yeah. I think. A- and from, you know, the aliens, m- m- you know, sort of mocking scene where you're trapped in a central hub and you're setting up gun outposts and that felt like a really refreshing slice of gameplay to the end bit where you're literally, contr- you know, fighting these giant strider mm. uh, robots with, with a quite unusual mechanic there, like a base defence mechanism, but yeah. a roving base defence mechanism. Quite an unusual slice of gameplay. And then the, the game ends on an absolute, you know, too often in gaming, we, we use like uh, these sort of like hyperbolic cliches, like, oh, this moment was jaw dropping. Mm. And what it was really was, you know, moderately more exciting than a lot of the boring nonsense that had gone in the game beforehand. But the <laughs> end of Half-Life 2, Episode 2, I think I literally, my jaw did slacken down where I went, like, you're not yeah. allowed to do that in this game. You, you, you can't do this. Yeah. And then left the game like that. Ah! And it's been, uh, it's been four, four or five years. You know, have, know. Come on, Valve. <laughs> don't, leave, don't leave me hanging, bro. <laughs> so I think it's a, difficult, it's a difficult package. You might buy it today and go, oh, this looks a little bit old and it's, it's not as uh, up to date as some of the other Team, games yeah, in the list. Team Fortress 2, I will add, is not... No one plays it anymore because they didn't support it post release, so no, it's, it's almost true. not even worth considering on but that list. But you can get it for ten quid now if yeah, you haven't sure. bought it, and then you get yeah. even if you buy it and just play Portal. So that's yeah. ten yeah. quid for Portal. There's two you Portals you that, in you? our top ten there, both yeah. Portal games. Yeah, clever, clever Valve with your orange <laughs> box. Yeah, well, Valve, Valve, two entries, two top tens. Come out with the yeah. orangey uh, box next. <laughs> so here we are, the sharp end, the final three of the best PS3 games of all time. And this might give the, the game away a little bit for some, but at number three, it is Batman mm. Arkham mm. Asylum. Second for one. It ain't number one. It ain't number one. Three's good though. Everyone voted for <laughs> Batman as well, didn't they? Yeah. 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 As a He's got in there somewhere. Got yeah. mm. Remember though, when Batman was first shown, a lot of people but it looked rubbish. Thought it looked rubbish. Not me. I didn't think it looked rubbish. Oh, you're pretty sure he said to me it looks better. Oh, it was you. Know, you you're thinking of you. It wasn't me. It was literally <laughs> you think of you. Like, we'll just, we'll just, yeah, flipped it right around here to protect yeah. each other. No, nah, well, you know, a lot of people did at the early stages not expect much from it. But you know what? Why would you from a superhero game? Well, quite. And suck. a, a mm. film license and a, and a superhero yeah. game. Well, a comic well, license. I, well, yeah, mm. you know, I mean. I think that's what. The telly. <laughs> it's sort of like a Dead Space situation. No one expects anything from that. No yeah. one expected mm. something so good from Batman. But and then I sat down to play it for review, same as I did with Dead Space, and went, wow, <laughs> what's this? This is amazing. That's not what you did. You yeah, just went. <laughs> <laughs> no, I definitely went, ooh. But yeah. <laughs> it was a surprise, and in a way, maybe that has done a, done a Call of Duty and changed a lot of the way developers think about games now. I think it really yeah, has. It's combat system and Absolutely. the detective mode, that's appearing yeah. in all kinds of games. Yeah. Hitman's yeah. basically copied Tomb that. Tomb Raider. Yeah, IDOS has basically nicked it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so it was so brilliant and so unexpected, and it, and it belongs to that that kind of not the genre of game, but that that, that from nowhere instant cult classic uh, that Bioshock yeah. uh, walked into. Uh, and I'm trying to think of other games that, that fit that template really, but um, it just it just dropped and was instantly brilliant. And everyone loved it, and it was so irresistibly playable and good. Mm. Everyone fell in love with it. Um, the, the thing it nails that's brilliant that no superhero game does especially well is you don't just play as Batman you literally are Batman yeah. you feel like Batman every time I duffed a load of dudes up in that game every time he does the slow-mo final punch mentally or physically I go BAF <laughs> BOM <laughs> you just feel so brilliant you know, you just feel so powerful, such a presence. Graceful, a we can like yeah. skirt between scenery. They and were clever like with the upgrades as well, because you were already a badass, but mm. it just sort of added more yeah. skills. Mm. But you know, you was, it wasn't like, oh, you're Batman, but all you can do now is punch once. No, you've still you've got the skills. We're giving you more skills now. It, they were like a natural things, like oh, he's gone out and forgotten his back cool. Yeah, stuff like that. And the asylum itself as well, yeah. the actual yeah. setting. Again, they've yeah. done that Bioshock mm-hmm. thing, which I think they 
took a leaf from Bioshock's book where it tells a story through the environment. Yeah, um, and <coughs> also the people in the world mm. react to Batman and to the villains in a, in a really believable way that they're really frightened of the villains, yeah. properly frightened, even though the Joker's like a ludicrous character, they're really scared of him. And Batman, they really respect, and it comes across immediately. And yeah. that's, I think, part of why you feel like a superhero, <coughs> because they treat you like one yeah. in yeah. the game. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. There's a mystique to your character. Mm. Um, just a, a wonderful, uh, you know, simultaneously innovative and brave mm. and bold and technically really strong, and a superhero game. All superhero games are rubbish. Not anymore. Yeah, and I don't even like superheroes, and I really like it. It's a great game. Number two. This obviously might give away number one. <laughs> <laughs> but may come as a shock to some when I say number two is Mass Effect 2. Ooh. Ooh. I thought you were going to say the other Ooh. one. Yeah. Mm. Mass the Effect 2. The way you pursed your lips looked like you were coming out That's with something ah, well, else. There we go. That's a fairly recent Mass game. Mass is surprising. That's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's blasted its way into uh, you know, all of our hearts. For, yeah. a, for a fairly new game to get that high that immediately is quite impressive yeah only came out this year um, what's also amazing about it is as I've just said repeatedly over the last hour I don't like long boring ramping <laughs> games uh, this is a 60 hour RPG and I think Mass Effect is absolutely sensational and I will also add I didn't really like it for 10 hours as in I thought <laughs> it was, you carried on playing yeah I thought it was quite good but a bit clumsy and a bit assumptive and I wasn't as fully immersed in its world but the more you play it, the more you realise, good grief, they've literally made a universe living in my PlayStation. Mm. And every night, I am Jean-Luc Picard exploring the universe in the tiny box on my PlayStation. Exploring and look, the universe and its inhabitants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. And again, the, the romance side to it, um, which is sort of ludicrous, as in you can romance various crew members, including the alien crew members, which I initially scoffed at because obviously, like everyone else, I went for Miranda because she's the obvious sex <laughs> one. Well, well, a bad what's wrong with Kelly? Isn't it Kelly on the? She's not one of the on main the, romances. You can just have no. yeah, you can just yeah, have a bit of fun with her. Yeah. She yeah. looks after just your a bit cabin, of fun. Not the fish, doesn't she? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. she never turns up in the cabin. That's the thing. You can sleep around if you what's want. Wrong with her? You mm. can you can make Shepard uh, an echo of yourself mm. of, uh, <laughs> of all the of all the men you wouldn't dare to be. He can be that. You know, you can live vicariously through Shepard. But yeah, you can be like... Is he on Twitter women? then? Where's a hoodie? <laughs> <laughs> you can be benevolent shepherd who goes around the galaxy uh, saying sort of huge platitudes whilst simultaneously neutralise, neutralising difficult situations. You can be the aggressive, badass commander of a rogue unit going, cut the BS! I'm going to slap you with the butt of a rifle and take your laser woman and all this sort of thing. And sell you a hooky fish. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and do all these different approaches to the same thing. Literally, again, reflecting the mechanic of Paragon and Renegade. Um, and it's just a game that builds and builds and builds and the sense of ownership and the way it swells at times it feels aimlessly, but then it builds to this sort of final set of mission and everything you've done to that point is reflected in the final outcome. And even within that final mission, there's a lot of critical and huge decisions to make. And you know, I will say, if you guff a decision up after you spent 50 hours living and breathing with these characters you love and or hate, the, the consequences are incredibly powerful. And I think because of that sense of ownership, this is why it's so incredibly high on, a, on our scale. I think all of us had an experience with Mass Effect mm. that probably feels unique to our, ourselves. Yeah. Even not the way our, our Shepherd looks. In our minds, that's the only way Shepherd ever could have been. Yeah. Our story was the only way our story ever could have been. Yeah. Anyone else want to quickly eulogise? I've just gone mad and eulogised mm. it anyway. It was nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I completely, I, I certainly agree with everything you said. And I don't, also, like having said, well, I don't like superhero games, but I love Batman. Um, it's the same with, I don't usually play RPGs, mm. but mm. Mass Effect was amazing. It is the ex most accessible RPG. Yeah. It does, doesn't really feel is. like one, yeah. No, it doesn't. It just feels like you're constantly going from one unique thing to another, and you're not just, oh, here's a bigger gun, go down some more corridors. It, it just feels like you're actually exploring yeah. and finding out what's happening. I'm just so glad it's on PS3, because I, mean, I, I played it when it first came out on another console. <laughs> and I thought this would be incredible yeah. if this was if this series was on PS3 and they brought it out. Yeah. So I just you know, I've, uh, yeah, I, I think it deserves to be up there, e easily top top two, which it Absolutely. is. Which brings us to the biggity big, the numero uno, 
the Primero of all games. It is. Oh, there's some text missing. I can't read oh. it. Um, <laughs> Uncharted 2. Yeah. No oh. surprise. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's got everything it would need to be number one. Mm. It's PlayStation mm. 3 exclusive. It's technically brilliant. It's funny. It's varied. Um, and age hasn't weathered it. I finished it. I'm just replaying loads of old games up late, as you may have picked <laughs> up. I finished it uh, last weekend, and age hasn't uh, weathered it at all. There's a few bits at the end that are a bit annoying, like the, fact the last boss is total mm. nonsense. But as a package of pacing and great design and great storytelling, you know, it's untouchable. Let's bring in Milf <laughs> here. Hitherto <laughs> has been almost silent, if not literally silent. Pretty Milf, much. why is it and should it be our number one? Um, it's just the. the it's amazing storytelling. Um, the characters kind of all, they're all likeable. Um, obviously the villains are not likeable, <laughs> obviously. Um, but yeah, the production values, the, the kind of relationship between the characters. Yeah. Um, it's just, it feels like a proper kind of pulp kind of adventure film you used to watch when you were a kid. And like Raiders of the Lost Ark. And it's just really tight gunplay. The cover system works well. And to top it off, it's got multiplayer as well, which it didn't necessarily need. I'm yeah. more focused on the single player, but it's pretty solid. So, yeah. I can. I think, yeah, it, it just seemed like when we started originating the list, it was always going to be there or thereabouts. Yeah. Uh, interestingly, up until the final uh, edition of Votes from Rich, oh. it was number one anyway. Oh, <laughs> um, it's nice to see my vote yeah, counting. Yeah. Uh, you, <laughs> you enable Flower to get to number 37 in the chart, which <laughs> that was the contribution. Uh, so there we go. Uh, that's our top 25 PS3 games of all time. That's what we're voting as our new definitive list that every PlayStation owner must own. Uh, there's some brilliant games that didn't make it in the list. I mean, off the top of my head, brilliant games include Street Fighter 4, that again is utterly fantastic, but... I suppose, arguably a bit niche. Mm. You've got uh, God of War 3 that technically is pretty good. Kratos is kind of a douche. You can see why that didn't work out. <laughs> uh, and, and then some really interesting games that were loved, but not loved enough to get them into the 25, like... Flower. Flower. Mm. Flower. Stacking. Stacking. I got stacking as well. So, so yeah. sad stacking, isn't yeah. there? I'll tell you now, this is a matter of interest. I, I did some big convoluted point scoring system mm. where like the t each person's first game got 25 points the second got 24 etc etc and I tallied up all these scores the 25th game which was Bulletstorm got 16 points so that's not that many votes mm. or, or like it could be one median vote and nothing else which I think is what it got Bayonetta got 15 points no so it narrowly missed out on icing Bulletstorm <laughs> Ratchet and Clank oh, Why got, was it nine? got 14 oh, Flower got 14 Pez 2011 got 14 <coughs> from me alone. <laughs> uh, Fallout 3, 14. Fallout 3, that was huge mm. at the time. Yeah. Um, Borderlands, 14. Far Cry got 10. Stacking got 9. Just Cause 2. Literally no mentions or no points worth mentioning were God of War 3, as we said, nothing. Resistance, nothing. Street Fighter barely registered. Any of the kill zones, whap, wow. gone. GT? GT, what's GT? No that, first party. That though. literally, <laughs> nev literally no, never made sure. it there. Yeah. Dead Space 2 got no mentions. Mirror's Edge. Oh, wow. No. So, bang, we're out. You're Box obviously going to disagree no with us. So, uh, mail us your thoughts on what should be the top 25 to uh, PSM3 underscore magazine. That's at, is it at PSM3 underscore magazine on Twitter. Yeah. Or head to our Facebook page. Or mail us, PSM3 at futurenet.com. Any of those ways. Mm. So, yeah, thanks for listening. Hope you've enjoyed our new top 25. Bye. 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 Bye.